All right, guys, so previously in my videos, I've shown you my Phantom and the way I set it up with a uh, DJI Zenmuse gimbal and a nice uh, Gowie Vision uh, 5.8 gigahertz FPV transmission system. Today, I want to show you guys my next edition, which I'm pretty excited about. It's the DJI Datalink, the 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth iPad uh, adapter. What that allows you to do is allows you to fly your Phantom from your iPad. I'm using an iPad mini. You can use a regular iPad as well. And when I say fly it, I mean not only can you fly it with a controller that's built on the iPad, but you can actually click on points on a map, very simply, they're called waypoints. You make waypoints, you upload it through uh, this adapter, and your Phantom will fly autonomously your mission down your street or around your park or wherever you want it to go. It's a very neat system, it's $299 US. Um, it's, I'll go ahead and say this right off the bat. It's really not made for the Phantom. It's made for the larger airframes that DJI provides, like the F450, the F550, and the S800. Um, it obviously is too big. Uh, the parts that you need are too big to fit under the shell of the Phantom. So what I did was, because I really wanted this on my Phantom, I cut a small hole and made a small bracket that goes on the back of the landing gear, and that's where I'm running my data link. Now, the data link runs on CAN bus, and CAN bus is a uh, type of system that uh, DJI uses and these are the CAN bus plugs. Now when you have upgraded your Phantom to run a Zenmuse gimbal um, what you've probably done is you've added a NASA PMU V2 or you've added the upgrade board. With those you only get one CAN bus port so after you've plugged your gimbal in you're done you don't have any more CAN bus ports so what you have to do is either get the DJI CAN bus hub which is about $55 or you can get an OSD because the OSD gives you two um, CAN bus ports as well and that's a little over $200. A friend of mine lent me the, the uh, OSD so that's what I'm using right now. Um, I'll probably replace this with a CAN bus hub when I can get one of those in. So that's how I have it wired in and um, the NASA VMU P2 comes out and splits all this for me uh, with the OSD. And so I can, able, I can get two CAN bus items into the NASA, which is what you need if you're going to do run a gimbal and a data link. Now, if you didn't want to run a gimbal, or if you're running some other brand of gimbal, you don't need the CAN bus. So you could just go straight into a NASA PMU V2 without having to do a run a CAN bus hub or a OSD. Um, it adds a lot of weight. Like I said, I don't really think it's designed for the Phantom. They don't claim it to be... Um, you're just going to really shorten your battery times. With all the things that I have um, on my Phantom, I'm only getting four and a half to five minutes of flight time um, with all this. So I just wanted to do it, so I did it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to be moving all this to a larger airframe at some point. Or the Phantom Vision that's coming out in late November, hopefully. Um, they're saying 20 to 25 minutes of flight time on that. If they do get that great, uh, I will definitely be adding this uh, module to it. Um, so that's the air end of the package. Um, of course, this is my FPV screen. That's I can watch real time my flight in real time. It's the Gowie GV100 system. It's about three hundred seventy dollars. And again, that shows you it's all included, all tight in here. You don't have to have wires and everything running around. It's real nice, and it fits real nicely in my Tradecraft case. Um, this is the ground end, so there's two parts to the system. The air end, which I've already shown you, which is I have hooked to the bottom back of the Phantom, and the ground end. The ground end is, it's nice and small too. Um, it's a 2.4 gigahertz uh, transceiver, and um, you can just lay this anywhere. It doesn't have to be, you know, anywhere near your Phantom. It just needs to be close to your iPad within Bluetooth range. So the uh, Datalink has a Bluetooth uh, module that connects via CAN bus. And then you have to power this module, so it has USB, you can power it via USB, or uh, DJI gives you a nice uh, little battery lead that you can plug into a, between a 3S and a 6S battery. Um, I'm just using a rechargeable power module. I'm just using a little Black & Decker power brick. Um, you can get these at, you know, wherever Walmart. Um, and it's nice, it'll, it'll last plenty of time to, it'll power the module. So what happens is, is the uh, data link module uh, with Bluetooth connects to your uh, iPad. When you launch the iPad app, the iPad talks to this data link module with Bluetooth, and then the data link module talks to the Phantom over 2.4 gigahertz, and it's a long range, uh, so it's much, much farther range than Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. 
Yeah, so you can actually upload coordinates in the air. You can change the Phantom's flight path while it's flying. Uh, you don't just have to upload coordinates on the ground and it does its mission and comes back. You can actually change these things while it's flying, which is really nice to do. So this is the iPad app. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much because DJ already has several videos um, on their uh, website that you can check it out and get really far into it. Um, so what I've done is I've set up a quick three waypoint mission and I have it on a loop and um, it's real simple. I mean it's the easiest iPad app to use. Uh, we're talking about some seriously sophisticated stuff here. I mean autonomous multi-rotor aircraft. I mean it's as simple as pushing three waypoints and hitting OK and launch and the, the Phantom does the mission comes back and automatically lands in your front yard. I mean it's incredible what we're doing now with this technology that uh, is out there. So I'm going to show you that right now. We're going to fly a quick three waypoint mission and uh, let's get to that right now. <laughs> 